Hi, I'm Richard Pedley and this is Garden Elf where we explore all matters relating to the creation of regenerative foodscapes. And I'm joined here by Dr. Nelson Lebo, of, he's the eco-advisor of the Palmerston North City Council and has established this farm here, Eco School, where he does um, permaculture internship uh, programs for people overseas. So welcome Nelson. <laughs> oh, that was bad. <laughs> It's funny, eh? when, you, when you're in the vibe and you do it the first time, it comes off really well, and then you try to replicate it. Yeah, yeah. And take custom. Okay, so try that again. It's eco school, isn't it? Eco school. Just stop this yeah, the eco school. Yeah. Recording. Take two. Yeah. Hi, I'm Richard Pedley, and this is Garden Out, where we explore the creation of regenerative foodscapes. And I'm joined here by Dr. Nelson Lebo, who is the eco-advisor of the Palmerston North City Council and has established this farm here, Eco School, where he does uh, permaculture design internships. So welcome, Nelson, how are you? Thanks, Richard. Welcome to the farm. Thank you. So um, <laughs> could you tell us a little bit, please, about your, your role as the eco-advisor of the council? Yeah, primarily my job is to advise people on housing, uh, whether they're building a new home, renovating, or whether they simply have a cold, damp, moldy home or a high power bill. Um, free, independent advice, um, any rate payer of the, of the city council. Um, <clears throat> but in the summertime, not many people are ringing me about moldy homes, and so I'm consulting people on gardening, composting, water management, drought proofing their section. Essentially, I'm a full-time government employed permaculture design advisor with um, offering a free service. Wow. So that can be quite a flexible service, can it, and what, what you provide? Yeah, I mean, if you, if you look at the um, job title, Eco Design Advisor, it's a huge mm. umbrella. Mm. And so in my opinion, I can pretty much um, advise people on anything in, in the field of eco design. Wow, wow. Um, and, um, and it's a great council to work for. I've got a great boss. And, he gives me free reign to go for it. Is this quite common in New Zealand to have this? Or? Uh, I think there's eight councils yep. out of something like 82 councils. I think there's eight councils that offer the service. Yeah. Most of those um, will focus only on housing. So I'm just unique because I've got a, different, a slightly different background in terms of market gardening, um, landscape management, and um, you know that aspect. What, what services do people tend to approach you for? Yeah, um, essentially during the cold months, um, I'm getting three or four calls a day, um, mostly involving moisture and condensation. Um, people want to know the right levels of insulation, what type, type of windows, people building a brand new home. Um, they can bring the plans to me for a review um, before going back to the architect. Could you tell us a little bit about the, the housing market in New Zealand and what are some of the, the common issues that are occurring with the sea? Yeah, it's generally said that we are 15 years behind Europe. Mm -hmm. So if you watch Grand Designs, <laughs> that might be here <laughs> 15 years from now. Wow. Kevin McLeod is always talking about energy efficiency <laughs> and sustainability and all. Mm -hmm. So we have a legacy of cold, damp homes in New Zealand, the existing housing stock really low performing. Unfortunately, a lot of new homes are being built to the building code minimum, which is literally the lowest legal level you can construct a, a house in New Zealand. These houses tend to be cold, some of them are damp, um, and they could even have, have some pretty high power bills. And this is a brand new $350,000, $400,000 home. Bad design. Simply a matter of bad design. If I can talk to people, um, point them in their right direction for the exact same build cost, they'll have they could double the energy performance and comfort of a home just by using smart design rather than bad design. So these houses are not orientated towards the sunshine, or they don't store heat well, and not integrating passive solar technologies at all. Or? Too many external corners, yep. complex roof lines, rooms in the wrong places too much south-facing glazing, too much west-facing glazing, um, yeah, the carriage in the wrong location blocking the sun, you name it, I've seen it. Yeah. So for your average 
two to three bedroom state house in New Zealand, um, a wooden kind of house, what would be some of the solutions that you'd recommend for that? So, um, for a retrofit, um, the first thing you want to do is super insulate your ceiling. Mm -hmm. Probably the next thing you'd want to do is put a uh, polythene ground sheet underneath the house to stop rising damp. Um, you want to make sure you've got an extractor fan in the shower. Um, then you're going to tackle your window. And some combination of really good lined curtains, really good high performance blinds, consider secondary glazing or double glazing. Um, <clears throat> And then a lot of behavioral uh, changes. How do you live in your home? Simple, free behavior changes can drastically improve the performance of some homes. And is this to let in more light and from, the, from the northern aspect of the house? And what, what are some things you're trying to achieve? And, and yeah, I mean, something as simple as opening up your windows and allowing cross ventilation to clear out the damp air and then closing your windows but doing it to ensure that you know instead lots of kiwis leave their windows open a little bit 24 7. that's the wrong technique better to open them for 10 or 20 minutes once a day flush the damp air out bring fresh air in and then close them down again exchange all the air all at once rather than trickle feeding cold winter air into your house 24 7. okay um, or just simply opening and closing the curtains at the right time of day. Okay. Really simple stuff. Um, cooking with pot lids on. I mean, it's all common sense. So by um, doing that, so by getting the ventilation through there, you're, you're removing the moisture from the house. Yeah. But then by closing that airflow out at night time, you're helping to insulate the house yeah. and store the heat in. So it's getting that, that balance between the airflow and the, the insulation. Yeah. Drier and warmer, and it's free. Okay. Um, now, if you're talking about adding, solar gain then you're talking about you know cutting holes and adding windows to the north maybe removing windows from the south mm. not a problem I and mean, that's what we did in our castle cliff house and it is an amazing high performance house mm. we're putting more window toward the sun or more glass toward the sun and less glass away from the sun but then you've got building consent and you know all of that involved as well so that's just one level up um, but certainly a great strategy hundreds of thousands of um, substandard houses in New Zealand. They're not going anywhere. So let's just improve the way that they perform. How does that compare? So if you're retrofitting an old house to make it more passively designed, as, as opposed to designing your, your new house and designing it to consider that, how do those two options compare? Is one better than the other in different circumstances? Here in Whanganui, much more cost effective to buy an existing house. Mm -hmm. Houses here are cheap as chips. Buy an existing house and renovate it. Okay. But up in Auckland or Christchurch or Wellington, where the property market is totally different, mm. you might be better off building new. Okay. Um, you know, you want to, you want a comfortable, healthy, energy efficient home at the best price. Mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't mean you have to build new. I mean, in Wanganui, it probably means you don't build new. Mm -hmm. And that's what permaculture design is. Design for your, um, your bioregion. Design for your climate. Design for your, um, what would it be called? Your market, your ecosystem. Mm -hmm. The Wanganui ecosystem, existing homes are cheap as chips. Um, and so that's the best approach to go. You know, adapt your design to your local conditions. And, and what about the other services you're mentioning? So in summer when the housing consultation drops off a little bit, what are some of the other services that people are looking for? Yeah, um, lots of interest in composting workshops. Mm -hmm. I've done some um, organic gardening master classes. Um, when there are water restrictions, mm -hmm. um, I've offered a little um, consultations on how to drought proof your property. Um, you know, water conservation. Um, even when I go and visit somebody, they, um, I'll notice their fruit trees have never been pruned. And mm. I'll say, hey, do you want a little lesson on fruit tree pruning? Mm. Um, ring me next week and I'll bring my secretaries around and I'll teach you how to prune your fruit tree properly. Wow, wow. 
You know, I mean, anything, I mean, it's just because I'm not fully booked advising on housing, so I might as well put myself to use. Sounds so. ideal. It must be nice being able to get around and have that flexibility in your job. <laughs> it, I mean, I honestly feel like I'm a fully supported government permaculture consultant. Yeah. I've got an electric car, I've got a smartphone, uh, you know, a desk, um, and I drive around giving out free permaculture advice. Wow. It's awesome. Is there, is there a future for this, do you think? Do you think the accounts might be employing more people in these kind of roles? Uh, well, if we're talking eight out of 82 councils around the country, by far the most important issue is housing. Mm -hmm. Because housing affects people's health. Mm -hmm. There's a disproportionate impact on the, the national health budget mm -hmm. from bad housing. We've got children going to emergency rooms, mm -hmm. children missing days of school, we've got adults uh, missing work days, productivity goes down. Um, you know, what's the cost of a child being admitted to hospital every fortnight for the entire winter and missing days of school versus the cost of um, insulating, heating, and ventilating a house properly? I mean, it's... And people picking up on these issues? Is there an awareness out there that by designing their house better they can... Yeah, we're talking about culture change, and mm -hmm. culture change always happens slowly. Yeah. It happens really slowly, and so, yes, it's happening. Primarily two groups, people in their mid-50s who want to future-proof their retirement and future-proof their power bills, um, and young couples with young children, and they say to me, I don't want my children to grow up in the house that I grew up in. Um, those two groups are leading the way in culture change of attitudes toward housing in New Zealand. Culture change is slow, um, but... Makes me re remember my own childhood when you mentioned that growing up in cold <laughs> state houses and I know what it's like. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, I grew up in North America. Yeah. Central heating, uh, cast iron radiators, warm, we had single glazing, but our house was still super warm because right. we had central heating. Wow. So we, we don't employ central heating in New Zealand? What would be the difference in how we heat our houses? And well, heat? first of all, we don't, yeah. <laughs> essentially. And um, here, here, this, this is it in a nutshell. Our house was so warm and dry in winter. In Detroit, my mom would get dried skin. We ran a humidifier all winter long, right? Over here in New Zealand, people are running dehumidifiers all winter long because they've got weeping windows, condensation, mold, and sick kids. That's about a 180 degree difference. Yeah. Is know. this the cl climatic differences? Is it just winter and winter here than it is in North America? Or is it more the design of the house? Um, I mean, these are poorly insulated. I don't want to you know, harp on this too much, but yeah. essentially they're poorly insulated, damp homes um, versus well insulated, centrally heated homes. So it's, it's just a matter of that. So what, what got you into this? this career, um, what was the kind of the pathway that got you there? Yeah, it's funny. This is Manu. Um, Hello. Um, yeah, I have no training in building. I think that's why I'm so successful, because yeah. I'm not trained as a builder or an architect. Yeah. Um, you have been ingrained of a certain way that things have to be done. Well, right, exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and I bring an international perspective. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I've been introducing some concepts to my clients and even to greater New Zealand where they're essentially unheard of here but they've, they've you know I've been working with them for 20 or 30 years in North America um, and m my background is in science education so primarily I'm an educator um, and what I'm doing is I'm helping people understand the physics and the economics of their home people understand comfort I don't have to convince them of their own comfort because everybody wants a comfortable home most people want a healthy home. So if I can lay out the, the physics, the economics, and um, in a way that they can really understand, they're going to open their wallet, they're going to make those investments, and slowly, one house at a time, we're going to improve the existing housing stock. Um, and what would be the career pathway? So if someone is from a teaching background, say, and they want to kind of follow us, 
a similar pathway and get into more eco design and eco consultation, what kind of pathway would lead them in that direction? Yeah, my path is extremely unusual because I love houses, I love old houses, mm. I've been, you know, I love architecture, I love the idea of renovating, I hate waste, mm. so we don't want to bowl a house and build a new one, we want to renovate it. Mm. So, um, so I just have been around housing and I've done up a lot of houses, but I, I wouldn't say this would be the normal pathway. You'd want to, uh, I mean, I think doing an apprenticeship in building is a great opportunity. There's a short, you're going to have jobs, you know, there's a shortage of builders, there's a shortage of, of trades people in New Zealand. You're going to make a good wage, you've got guaranteed salary. But don't go and do an apprenticeship with a dinosaur, you know? Um, we need, and there's great builders out there who are forward thinking and innovative. And there are builders who are changing their ways. Um, but it's slow, it's really slow. So the career pathway I would say would be, you know, go become an architectural designer, no need to be an architect, or do an apprenticeship, or, um, or go in, you know, take the pathway uh, to become a building inspector, you know, work for a council. And then, um, then you'll understand the legislative part of it um, well enough. Um, and then you can engage in the eco-design part of it as well.